Good morning, everybody. It is wonderful to have you here with us, whether you're here or whether you are joining us online. It is marvelous to be able to welcome you to our parish-wide holiday club all-together service. It's going to be a fun-filled affair. Um, I don't know how long you've necessarily been sitting here. Some of us have been here in the building since 8 o'clock this morning because before the service today we had our holiday club session in the upper rooms here uh, for all those that signed on to be part of the fun. We have had lots of fun already this morning. We're going to continue having fun throughout our service together as we think about the love that God has for us and the fact that he is never taking that away, that he is always looking out for us and always wanting to welcome us back to him. My name is Andy. I am the Youth and Children's Minister here in the parish. Uh, we have lots of different people that are going to be involved in our service this morning, including uh, Ben, the vicar of the parish, who will be speaking to us a bit later on, and Wendy, our associate vicar, who is leading our prayers. And hopefully, you will all have uh, a small Duplo brick. Can you hold those Duplo bricks aloft? Marvellous. If you are uh, joining us at home and you currently don't have a Duplo brick or a Lego brick in your hand, but you have got them at home, uh, please do go and find a Lego brick or a Duplo brick because they will be integral for our prayers later on in our service. Well, in a second, we are going to uh, stand and sing together to start our act of worship in the right way because it's only right that when we come before God that we should worship him and bow down before him in praise. Uh, but let me pray for us all first. God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you for drawing us together this morning to be with each other and to be with you in praise and worship, adoration and thanksgiving. And we thank you that you are here by your spirit with us today. We pray that you would speak to us through your word, that we would speak with you through our prayers and through our thoughts, and that we would be changed by you this day. We ask this all for Jesus and his kingdom. Amen. So, as I've said, we are going to stand and sing our first song together. If you don't know what it is, it's very simple. It has one verse and one chorus. It is the song, Come, Now is the Time to Worship. So let's stand and sing together. Two, two, three, four.
please do take a seat. Although it is our parish-wide holiday club service, naturally there are notices to give. It's a good time to do that because we are all gathered together in one place. So if you miss any of these, you can find more information from the parish office. Um, and some of these things are also on our website, so you can look there for them as well. But the first thing is to say that there are two services coming up that we want to make you aware of. The first one is our regular midweek Holy Communion service. That's happening this coming Wednesday, 10.30 a.m., right here at St. Peter and St. Paul. So if you'd like to come and join us for that, please do. And the next one is that Worship in the Wild, our outdoor family gathering for worship, fun, and all sorts, will be next happening on Sunday the 31st of July. So that's two weeks today, and that's 3 p.m. out here in the churchyard at St. Peter and St. Paul as well. And the final thing I have to say is that Operation Christmas Child are packing up hygiene packs to send out to partner churches in Ukraine. Now the packing of those is going to be happening this coming week uh, at their depot on Cannon Lane, right next door to McDonald's. Uh, and if you would like to sign up to be a part of that group that are going to be packing, there are lots of different slots, mornings, afternoons, evenings, throughout this week, you can sign up either by going to the Operation Christmas Child website or by getting in touch with the parish office here and they will pass your details along. So those are the main things. Ben has something else he wants to say, but as always, everything else is on our website and our next parish news will be coming out this coming Thursday, which will also be covering uh, the rest of July and all of August. So it'll be going all the way up through to September, a massive edition that will be coming out this coming Thursday. But, Ben. Thank you, Andy. Let me add my uh, welcome to Andy's. Um, just to say, um, many of you know we've been seeking to appoint a senior uh, minister for families over the past few months. Um, someone who can take a lead in the youth, children and families team um, and leading our strategy for discipleship and outreach. Um, to our families, our children, our young people. Um, after interviews a couple of weeks ago, I'm excited to say that we've made an appointment um, to this post. Um, so do join me in giving thanks and praying for Alison Blakely, um, known to many of us over the years as she takes up this post, um, particularly as Alison makes the, the big career move um, from teaching into full-time paid ministry. Um, she won't start until January, um, but we wanted to share news as soon as possible. We'll hear more over the coming months. Uh, we'll hear from Alison too, but it's an exciting moment as we seek to build uh, and, and grow this ministry, get our team back up to two um, with this senior staff appointment. Why don't I lead us uh, in a prayer for that? Father God, we thank you for every age and stage represented in our church family all those trusting in Jesus. But we pray particularly now for the youth, children and families ministry. We thank you for all the families we have across our churches. We thank you for the teams who serve faithfully in this area. And we pray especially now for Alison and for Andy as the team grows. We pray that they would serve you faithfully together, uh, helping all our youth, children and families grow in the love of the Lord Jesus um, and reaching out afresh across the parish and across the town with the glorious good news of the gospel, of your love and forgiveness for us in Jesus, in whose name we pray now. Amen. Amen. So, as I said, already this morning, we have been uh, hearing in our holiday club session that we are loved by God. And we've been thinking about a particular story, a story that I'm sure is familiar to most of us here. It's a story that we heard not many weeks ago, back on Father's Day. But we're going to simply recap that, because later on in our service, we're going to be focusing on the elder of the two sons that are part of this story. So you may know it as the prodigal son, or the lost sons, or the lost son, however you know it. We're going to quickly recap the first part of that story now, because we're all up to speed. So, there was a father who 
who had two sons, funnily enough, an elder son and a younger son, generally the way it works. But the younger son decided that actually he was better off without his father. So he wanted all of his share of the goods and the property, and he asked his father for them. And because his father loved him and wanted him to make his own decisions, he said, yes, you can have them. So the son took them and he went off somewhere far away. And he ne didn't necessarily make the best choices because he spent and squandered everything that he had. So he was left with absolutely nothing. And at the exact same time, there happened to be a famine in the place where he was living. So he was unbelievably hungry and there was no food for him to have. He had to go and work for somebody in that country feeding the muckiest of mucky animals, pigs. And he was so hungry his belly was so empty that he would have been gladly eating the stuff that the pigs ate, but nobody gave him anything. But then one day he comes to his senses and he says to himself, my servants in my father's house have more than enough. I should just go back there. And this is what I'll say to my dad. Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son but just treat me as one of your servants. And so that's what he does. He gets up and goes home. In the meantime, the dad is sitting there at his window, longing for his son to come home. And then he sees someone in the distance. Who is it he sees? His younger son. Does he wait for his son to come to him? Absolutely, he does not. He gets up, hoiks up his robe, braces his knees, and dashes out to his son before he's even on the property border. He gets to his son and before his son can really say anything, this whole speech he's prepared, his father says, you're alive, I thought you were dead. You've come back to me. Quick, get him some clothes, get him some shoes, get him some fine jewelry. Let's kill the fatted calf and celebrate because my son who was lost is now found. He was dead, but he has come back alive again. And that is a fantastic thing that that son came back and that the father didn't scold him or say, how dare you do that? What have you wasted? Where's all my money? He embraced him and he loved him and he was so glad to have him back. And one of the things that we do when we come together as God's children in churches, in other buildings, before him, is we come and we have to say sorry because we know that we act like that son. We go off. We take the things God gives us and we just waste them. We say, actually, God, we think we can do things better by ourselves. And so what we're going to do is we are going to say together uh, the words of this confession, which are very much based on this story. But before we say those words, I'm just going to give you a moment in quiet to bring before God anything that you want to bring before him to say sorry for this morning. So I'm going to say the words in italics on the screen, and if you could join in with the refrain, Father, we have sinned. Father God, we are sorry for when we have walked away from you and acted like we do not need you. Father, we have sinned. We are sorry for when we have wasted the gifts you give us. Father, we have sinned. We are sorry for when we have hurt you and others through what we do, say, and think. Father, we have sinned. And the amazing thing is that the Bible promises us, just like the father in that story, that when we come back, when we say sorry, God doesn't hold it against us. He forgives us because he loves us so much because of what Jesus did for us on the cross. He sees his son in place of all our badness. So we're going to say these words together to acknowledge that and to thank God for that. So let's say together, we are not worthy to be called your children, but Jesus makes us worthy. Thank you for loving us and help us to live as your children. Amen.
Well, it's only right that in response to the forgiveness, the mercy and grace that God holds out to us, that we celebrate him because of who he is and what he's done. And so we are going to be celebrating God's love now in the words of the song, God's love is big. And uh, there are some actions for this song. So if you feel up for doing the actions, please do. Those of us that were here earlier for our holiday club session, we have been doing the actions. We may be sick of the actions by now, but at least we know them. So first of all, can I encourage you to not stand because I'm going to take you through the actions. Because it's important that everybody knows them so that nobody can moan and say, well, I just don't know the actions. So I'm going to go back to the middle and show you the actions. We're going to go through it. We're going to do the verse, then the chorus, then the verse. And that's all you need to know because there's a bridge part which just involves a lot of shouting and waving our arms around. But you'll get that when we get there. So we're going to try and keep them quite simple. So it's God who made the universe, and we're just going to do a big circle. The earth, the sun, the moon, they're all round, so we're just going to do a small round circle. And the stars has a place in his heart for me. This is a tricky one. From the beginning, point one way, it doesn't matter which way you point, to the end. God will always be my friend. So I can jump and shout. And if you want to jump and shout, please feel free. <laughs> and this is the, these are the key actions. Because God loves me. Okay, that's the key action. So then it goes, God's love is big. God's love is great. God's love is fab. Let's celebrate. We're having a party. God's love surrounds me every day. And I love to sing and say, God's love is big. God's love is strong. God's love goes on and on and on. God's love surrounds me every day. And I love to sing and say, back to those key actions, God loves me. And then a big way. And the second verse is, um, since before the world began, God knew me and had a plan. And then you just walk for my life and how it's going to be. He sent Jesus to be my friend, to show his love would never end. So I can jump and shout because God loves me. Back to the chorus. You get how it goes. I'm going to be up here doing those actions so you don't feel like a Wally because I will be the biggest Wally. <laughs> And if anybody else wants to join me, even if your name isn't Wally, you're more than welcome to come up if you're over 18. So we're going to stand, we're going to sing, do the actions if you want. The main thing is we are celebrating the fact that God's love is so amazing and we want to thank him for that. So let's stand and sing together now. One, two, three. Okay, so for this next bit, we're just going to be doing lots of big, great, fab 
strongs. Shout them out as loud as you can, okay? God's love is big, big. sit down you can have a rest uh, we're gonna have we're gonna have the next part of our story now and it's gonna be more than just me doing it so uh, there are four people in particular so let's come on up and let's hear the next part of the story which is the part that Ben is mostly gonna be speaking on but if he strays into including the youngest son we will forgive him The son was in the field. As he came closer to the house, he heard the sound of music and dancing. So he called to one of the servants and what? asked, What does this mean? The servant said, Your son's come home. Your dad's killed the fatted calf for, for us to eat because he's come back safely. The older son was so angry and would not go in the feast. So his father went out and begged him to come in. The son said to his father, I have served you like a slave for many years. I have always obeyed your commands, but you never even killed a young goat for me to have a feast with my friends. And your other son has wasted all your money on prostitutes. Then he comes home and you kill the fatted calf for him. The father said to him, Son, you're always with me. All I have is yours. We had to celebrate because your brother was dead and now he's alive. He was lost, but now he's found. Thank you for uh, that reading. Now, I've um, lost some children around the church. They're not real children. Um, they're cuddly toys. There should be eight children hidden somewhere under the pews. If you want to look right under the pew, and if you find one, bring one up, put it on the table here. There's eight of them. We've got, here we've got one. Brilliant. They could be anywhere, any age, any stage, not just for the young ones. Jason, there's not one for you, I'm afraid. Stick them on the table. Well done, well done, well done. Well done. No, on the, no, no, no. On the, bring them under the pews, under the pews. Have we got eight? How many have we got? Place them on the table. Oh, there we go. We've got Charlie Brown there. How many have we got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. David, thank you so much. Eight. Eight, eight. Well done. We've got our eight children who were hidden under the people. Eight children, all very different. Children are all different. My actual children are all different. Just three of them, not eight. They all have their own interests, their gifts, their characters. And this Holiday Club Sunday is all ages together now. We're going to look at that story Jesus tells about another father and his children. And we've heard already two sons, each very different, both with the same father, a father who is full of love for them both. And do have your Bibles open, and that may well help you, well, it will help you. Uh, and why don't I pray before we look at the passage? It's page 1049 uh, of the Pew Bibles. So let me pray before we look at these verses. Father God, we thank you for your word to us. Uh, a light to our path and a lamp to our feet. Father God, we do pray 
um, that you would uh, guide us with it by your spirit. Teach us what it means to love you and to know how much you love us. Amen. Um, Earlier today, our children, young people and their leaders have been looking at, as Andy said, one of the sons, the younger son, the son who treated his father really badly. He wished his dad was dead. That's the power of the passage. He took all his money and he went off. He did all the things he wanted to do to make him happy. And yet, when it comes to it, when the son comes back to his father, recognising he doesn't deserve anything from his father for the way he's treated him, but hoping the father might let him be a slave in his house, we see an amazing love, full of grace, giving the younger son what he doesn't deserve, forgiving the son for treating his father so badly, for taking the father's good things but not actually wanting a relationship with his father. In fact, turning his back on his father. The son went off from his father when he should have stayed at home with him, yet the father forgives him when he says sorry and welcomes the younger son back into his family as a son, not as a slave, but as a son, full of love and grace, giving the son what he doesn't deserve. A welcome back into the family for the son who went off from the father when he should have stayed with him, yet the Father is full of love and grace. Earlier today, our children, young people, and their leaders were looking at that younger son, and it's a glorious picture of what God does when we turn back to him. When we repent, when we turn from living as gods of our lives to living our lives for God, longing to come back into God's family and live with him. When when we say sorry, God is full of love and grace. He forgives us for treating him so badly. And for those of us here who are like the younger son, walked away, turned our backs on God, more excited about living as gods of our lives instead of God, know this, God is full of love and grace. He will forgive us if we turn back and say sorry. We will be welcomed back into God's family. We need to know this morning, whoever we are, whatever we have done, as long as there is life and breath in our bodies, it is never too late to come back to God, to say sorry to God and find the forgiveness he offers us in Jesus. So that's the message for all these little soft toys who wandered away and got lost. But they haven't all wandered off. I have got one toy who's been with me all along, who stayed here whilst the others wandered away. I know one or two of you have spotted him already. But anybody who could reach up who might be able to find Evie, why don't you, you were, I think you've got the, the height on there to come and find my child who stayed with me. Can you get it? Just well done, Evie. Thank you so much. What a good boy he's been all the time here with me. He didn't wander off anywhere. He stayed, he's been loyal and faithful this whole time. But things are not always what they seem. Back to our story, there is another son, an older son, verse 25, who stayed with his father the whole time. What do you think he's gonna make of the younger son's return? and the Father's love and forgiveness. Let me ask you, hands up, any age or stage, what makes you angry? What makes you angry? Remember, we are going out live on the internet at the moment. (laughs) What makes you angry? Big hands up, Gabriel. Not getting my Robux, not with my Robux. Not getting my Robux, is that a game you play? It's a game, so not getting something in a game you play, Claire. People who are, people who are having bonfires at the moment, that's upset Claire. Discrimination. 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 That's a big word. We could have a whole sermon on that one word that can, let me, let me do one more right in the back, Byron. Oh, playing a game when you get killed in a computer game or something. What a frustration. 
makes me so annoyed too. How about this? When someone else gets something you think they don't deserve. How many times have you heard or said, it's not fair? All the time. At home, <laughs> at home, at school, at church, at work, it's not fair. We hear a lot about that in our house. That's just my wife, Jane. <laughs> or even worse, when someone else gets something you think they don't deserve, but you think you deserve it instead. Oh, that's really annoying. What about when the lad at school who never bothers revising gets top of the class in the test, and you've worked so hard to prepare? Why are you giving that to him? He doesn't deserve it. I do. I'm the one who's done all the hard work. Well, in Jesus' story, there's an older son, verse 25, who stayed with his father the whole time. What do you think he will make of the younger son's re return and the father's love and forgiveness? I can tell you now, he is not pleased. He's been working out in the field, verse 25. Comes home after a long day working for his father. He hears the party. He asks the servant what's happening. And when he finds out daddy's throwing a party for his younger brother because his brother's come back, verse 28, he is so angry. He is so angry he won't join the party. So instead the father comes out and pleads with him to, to come inside and join the party, I think, to celebrate the younger son coming back. And then it all spills out. And basically, verses 28 and 29, it is one big, it's not fair. So after three, we're going to shout out that one big, it's not fair. After three, one, two, three, it's not fair. But it's more than that. For this hard-working older son, it's more like, why are you giving him that? He doesn't deserve it. I do. I'm the one who's done all the hard work. But here's the really interesting thing. Because what this older son says reveals what's in his heart. And it reveals that the older son's heart is no different from the younger son's. He may have stayed at home all that time. But this son has no more of a relationship with his father than the younger son. He compares his father to a slave driver. An unfair slave driver who should have given him the party, at least he's earned it. So the story goes. The, the older son thinks he deserves the father's love more than the younger son. But in reality, he's been just as horrible towards his father as the younger son. You're just a mean old slave driver and you owe me one, Dad. You owe me one. The father is so full of love and forgiveness, but neither son has treated the father the way he deserves. Neither son deserves the father's love. And it's interesting, really, thinking about this older son here in our service this morning, our second part of our holiday club weekend, because we're the ones here in church now. You may have been coming to this church 20, 30, 40, 50 years. Week by week, you, you may have only been coming a few months, like me. But the point is, we're here now. We're, we're not out there, wandered away from God. We're more like the soft toy who was with me here at the front all the time than the eight who wandered off. Which means we're more likely to fall into the danger of thinking God owes us something for our many years of service our regular attendance, our, our trying to live as good people for God. We're more likely to think that if anyone deserves God's love and forgiveness, it's people like us, rather than people like the younger son. And we may even find we resent God's love and forgiveness towards others when we think we deserve it so much more. Or when we face problems and challenges, much easier to think God owes us a break and so resent him. 
It's interesting from this story Jesus tells that it's possible to be as far away from a real relationship with God sat here this morning as all those who've never been to church before. Because what really counts is our heart attitude towards God. A God who is full of love and grace, forgiving us for the way we've treated him. Whoever we are, whatever we've done, But we need to see we all need God's love and forgiveness. None of us actually deserve it. It's more likely this church full of us are are more like older sons than younger sons. The younger sons are all out there in the world and they need God's love and forgiveness. But we must never forget we need it equally sat here now. Naturally, our hearts are no different to anyone else's. We all naturally want to be gods of our lives instead of God. So we've got two sons, both are lost. Jesus is speaking to two groups of people gathered around him. If you've got your Bibles, chapter 15, verses 1 and 2, there are the tax collectors and the sinners, and there are the Pharisees and the teachers of the law. And he's teaching them both, they both need the Father's love, and they both need the Father's forgiveness. Both need a real relationship with God. The rebellious sinner and the self-righteous Pharisee. But the one thing, and this is the beauty of this story, that is constant through the whole story, is the father's love. God is gracious to younger son and older son alike. Both underestimate the father's love. The father ran to the younger son in verse 20. We got that picture from Andrew of him hoiking his robes up and running to the son, and so the father goes out to the older son in verse 28, full of love and grace for both of them. A love that delights whenever lost children return, whether from afar or whether much closer to home. We're we're coming into land uh, now. Two things as we draw to an end. First, repentance. Repentance means to turn around. Um, If you can, uh, and please don't worry if you can't, I'd love us to take that picture of repentance with us. I'd love you, if you can, to stand up in the pew now. Then on three, what we're going to do, if you can't stand up, don't worry. On three, what we're going to do, we're going to turn 180 degrees. Where you are, we're going to face the back. So one, two, three. This is good. Now, I know some people are asleep when we preach, but I've never spoken to a whole church who've turned their backs on me. You've done a full turn now, and you are headed off in another direction. Let's do it again. On three, back to me. One, two, three. Turn and sit down. Thank you so much. Repentance is turning from sin to God. It's setting off in another direction. From living as gods of our lives to living our lives for God. And it's transformative. It sets our lives off in a whole new direction. Repentance, true repentance, is a whole new direction. And it's interesting, we never know what happens to the older son. Jesus leaves us on a cliffhanger. As the story ends, he's still on the outside. That rebellious son is inside, but the older son is outside. That's interesting. The younger son became a family member again. He was totally restored. It's never too late to come back to God, to turn and trust in Jesus. Whoever we are, whatever we've done, there is a loving Father, full of grace, waiting for you, ready to transform your life for your good and his glory. So that's first, repentance. And the second thing as we close, we are all equally in need of God's grace to us in Jesus. God's undeserved kindness, sending Jesus to win us a place in God's family. A place we could never earn by our hard work, but which Jesus earned for us through his death on the cross. There is no room for anyone to be self-righteous before God. So as we finish now, Jesus is painting for us a glorious picture of God's love and his grace. The the encouragement from Jesus is to look to the Father and be astounded 
be dumbstruck about how amazingly he loves every single one of us in the mess and the brokenness of all our lives. And how God rejoices truly, deeply, when lost sinners turn to him in repentance. Trusting in Jesus' work rather than our own to make us right with God and bring us into his family. What, what a great and glorious God who offers us forgiveness and new life in Jesus, whoever we are, whatever we've done, and who then calls us to live transformed lives as we trust in him. Why don't I lead us in a prayer? Father God, we uh, thank you uh, of what this story teaches us about you, of what you're like and how you treat us your abundant love and grace to us, seen ultimately in the Lord Jesus and his death on the cross, would your spirit work that grace deep into our hearts for our good and the glory of your name. Amen. How amazing that love is. And we're going to sing of that love again. We sang of that love earlier. We're going to sing of that love again. In the words of another classic song, How Deep the Father's Love for Us. And if during this song uh, you'd like to treat it more as a time of prayer and a time of reflection, please feel free to do that. So we're going to stand and sing that song now. And if there's anyone yet who has not got one of those Duplo bricks, uh, this song will be a great time to grab one because we're going to go straight into our time of prayer using those bricks after we have sung together. So if you'd like to stand and sing, let's do that.
a seat. And we're going to have our prayer time now, as Andy has said, in a, a slightly more interactive way than perhaps you're used to. And on your way in, you should have been given one of these uh, bricks. So do hold those uh, in your hands now. Give a wave if you haven't got one, and somebody will pop one into your hand. All good. Uh, now, prayer is one of the two pillars holding the bridge for our vision booklet and is vitally important to the life of the church and for our lives as Christians. And there's no one way to pray. So this morning we're going to just show you one other way that you could uh, pray and that we can pray together. So I will lead, lead you in the prayers, but I will lead you to have moments of quiet to pray for the things that I bring to mind for you in that space. So we're going to uh, be in an attitude of prayer, but do have uh, your bricks handy. So let us pray. First, I invite you to hold your brick as we pray for ourselves now. A time for us to thank God for all that he has given you. A time to share with God those things that may be worrying you. And a time to ask God to bless you and to help you to bless others. And next I'm going to invite you to count the bumps that are on your bricks. For each bump that you have on your brick, pray for a different person. Maybe that will be a friend or someone in your family. Perhaps your teacher at school or your boss at work. Maybe that will be somebody who cares for you. Ask God to bless those people this week. Next, I'm going to invite you to turn to see if you can find someone who has a different colored brick from the one that you have. Let's take a moment to thank God that he knows each one of us by name. Thank God in this moment for the other person you found and the things that make them special to you. Let's pray that we can learn to love one another as God has loved us, even when we find that hard. Now I'm going to invite you to build your bricks with the others who are in your pews. And as we are building, we're still praying. We are praying that we seek to build one another up in faith. And as you look at that tower or building that you've made, 
Pray for your community where you live. And as you take a moment to focus on how those bricks are built together, let us pray for peace and unity in the places where there is division. Father God, today we have heard just how amazing your love for your children is. And we thank you that when we lift our prayers to you, you hear us. The Bible tells us, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. We're going to draw all our prayers this morning together with the words of the Lord's Prayer, praying as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name your kingdom come your will be done on earth as in heaven give us today our daily bread forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for the kingdom the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. And at the end of the service, why uh, not take your bricks out with you when we go for refreshments and see how big a tower we can build as a church together. Thank you. That's definitely my kind of a challenge. So we are uh, going to continue uh, saying words together now and as we come as the gathered family of God uh, one of the things that we often say is the creed a statement of what we believe uh, and the creed that we're going to be using this morning um, is adapted from part of the Bible and it's something that we can all say together it may be one you said before it may not be one you said before uh, but if, as we read through the words, you're thinking, I'm not sure if I necessarily believe this just yet, please don't feel compelled to say them, but you may want to have a think about them. Are they true for you? Because it does say that we are part of one family, united under God. So why don't we say these words together now? We believe in God the Father from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, we have another opportunity to sing of God's wonder and greatness now uh, in the words of the wonderful old hymn, Tell Out My Soul, a fantastic opportunity for us to literally do that, to tell out our soul, to sing as loud as we possibly can to God. So as we join together for our final time this morning, let's stand and sing.
we be telling of your greatness all the rest of our days to our children, to their children, to all those that we meet and come into contact with. Amen. Well, we are at the end of our service now, um, and I don't know what part of that last hymn resonated the most with you, um, but for me it is the hungry fed because my stomach is growling through not having had breakfast this morning. Um, but after the service there will be a wonderful opportunity for us to be able to stay for refreshments, for hospitality, to meet and greet each other. And if you are new here this morning or if there are people that you do not recognize who are among us, please do make sure that you have a chat with them. And for those of you that are joining us for our barbecue and other fun and games in the Vicarage Garden afterwards, the barbecue itself will be starting at 12.30, but if you'd like to come along a little bit before that, you'd be more than welcome. The Vicarage Garden is just out to the left once you go out of the church. It should be easy to spot, but look for someone in a red T-shirt. They'll be able to direct you if needs be. So... As we come to the end of our service, we're going to pray for one final time. Lord God, we thank you for blessing us this morning with your word, with your spirit, with your presence. We pray that you would be the one leading us out of this place, that we would go to do the work you have set before us. But we wouldn't do it begrudgingly or like slaves as the elder son did, but that we would want to do it joyfully because you fill us with your love and your joy. So we thank you for blessing us and we pray that we would go in that blessing that comes from you as God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The music group are going to once again be playing God's Love is Big. If you want to do the actions and sing along, you are more than welcome. But otherwise, we would love to stay and chat with you after the service. One, two, three. God, who made the universe i uh-huh.